All right, folks, welcome to 2021 Super Mega Fest. The Bob Show is back here for 14 years, and this is one of the traditions right here, being in the Batmobile. But Blackie, Jordan, Victor, all the Bob Show cast members are here today. We're going to have a great event. Blackie, are you prepared today for what? I am prepared to have a super mega fun time. But the question is, why the hell are you letting the Joker sit in the Batmobile, Robert. Everybody knows you're a Robin guy anyways. All right, folks, check out all the action here at Super Mega Fest. All right, folks, joining me right now is the beautiful, the talented, the incredible Maria Canellas, Super Mega Fest 2021. Maria, how do you like being here today? I love it. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Now, this is the second time you've been here. Remember the first time you came here with your husband, Michael? Okay, yes. And how was he doing? He's good. He's very good. He's home with the kids right now. Actually, I think he's heading off to a show. Oh, okay. So let me ask you one of my first questions. With Ring of Honor closing down, you're a big part of that. Uh, what are your thoughts about uh, your great time with the company and it closing down, your, your overall thoughts of that happening? So Ring of Honor isn't closing, okay. but we don't know what the future holds. So um, for the first three months of next year, Ring of Honor is kind of being put on pause. And then in April, they're going to do a pay-per-view. So between that time, I think what they're trying to do is really reassess what the company is about. And hopefully, Ring of Honor comes back stronger than ever. But we all were released. So all of this fantastic Ring of Honor talent is now out there on the independents and also going to all these major promotions. So it's an exciting time in wrestling, for sure. Out of everything you've done, what would you consider as one of your favorite moments of your entire career? Oof. Um, you know, the fa my favorite thing I've ever done is probably behind the scenes. Um, I've really enjoyed my time with Ring of Honor, being able to work with the women. Um, after the Miranda and Roxy match at the pay-per-view for Ring of Honor, they came back and the looks on their faces, because they knew that match was fantastic. I think it was the match of the year for all of female wrestling, maybe in wrestling in general, because it had everything. It had emotion, it had heart, it had that hope for the future, and um, I'm really proud of that. Now, when you came in, you know, with the diva search and everything, wrestling, women's wrestling has evolved and gotten so much better, and the women are respected more, and they're having five and ten star matches, and now fans are looking at the women as they would look at the women, look at the women as they would look at the men. How do you feel the evolution of women wrestling has come along? Well, I think that 
that's a little bit of a misnomer. There were fantastic wrestlers, even, even back then. Yeah. I mean, you think about um, Awesome Kong and Gail Kim and what they were able to do on Impact at that time. So there were incredible wrestlers back then. It's just that the biggest company of them all, WWE, wasn't spotlighting them. Yeah. So these are things that women have fought for for a long time. Everyone from Mickey James to uh, Victoria to Trish to Lita. We've begged for more and more time. And now we're finally getting that opportunity to show what we can do. Um, when I started putting together the Ring of Honor Women's Tournament, I, I was curious if I would have, you know, as many wrestlers as I needed for the tournament, which ended up being 15 total. And come to find out, I could have done a tournament of 32. There are that many women out there. Um, and they're fantastic talent. They compete with the men. They also compete um, individual matches back and forth. And then you also have the tag champions that are out there as well. So um, it's a really exciting time for women's wrestling. Did you also like the NWA women's pay-per-view in power that happened? I did, yeah. It was great to see so many people coming back together again. That's fantastic. Your last run in WWE with Mike, um, and he was known as Mike Canellis. I mean, how would you, ex your experience of that last run, what was it like? Did you kind of fairly not like it, or are you glad you got it over with, or? I, you know, at a lot of, uh, a lot of times people ask me that question. I love to perform, so I don't look at a script and think to myself, oh, I can't do that, or that's embarrassing, or that's whatever. I look at it as an opportunity. And it's just unfortunate that WWE is so immature in the way that they think that they don't think things through. And they had a golden opportunity to really create a star in Mike Bennett, and they chose not to. And I think we see that over and over again with WWE is they start to get, you know, behind someone and then they cut their legs out. Um, I think maybe, you know, maybe it's immature thinking, maybe they just don't think things through. Um, but it gives everybody a great opportunity on the indies and in these other companies to take a bit of that name and really highlight what they are capable of. I agree. How do you maintain being drop dead gorgeous? <laughs> drop let me focus on me. Drop dead gorgeous. Have two children and a husband. Manage that life. Being beautiful. Having the two kids in pro wrestling. How do you manage it all? Um. I don't think about it much. Okay. I think that if I were to think about all the things that need to be done during the day, it's it's too much. I like to say I'm always failing at something. There's always something that I'm focusing more on the women's division at Ring of Honor, or I'm focusing more on my kids, or I'm focusing on my husband, or I'm focusing on photo shoots, or I'm focusing on what comes next in wrestling. And um, so something is always kind of being left behind but uh, at the same time, I try and just keep everything moving, yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, I kind of give myself the name of the bulldozer where I'm just like, no, I'm coming through. This yeah. is happening. I'm going to do it. Nothing's in my way, right? No. I mean, so many people thought that when I was released from WWE back in 2010, that was it. That was going to be the end of my no. career. Um, it's 11 years later. I'm still in this business. I'm still having the time of my life. I, I'm still performing, I'm still creating, and I feel like this is actually the best time of my life. So, um, yeah, I'm the bulldozer. <laughs> you are the bulldozer, folks. Maria, the bulldozer. Can I, let me just say this, please, with all due respect. Let me take a, show this picture right here. This is going to be the best ass in professional wrestling, if I can say that, please. I mean, the beautiful, beautiful Maria Canellis right here, Japan, Ring of Honor, WWE, TNA, Impact Wrestling, you have done it all. But my last question is, what does the future hold for Maria Canellis? Ooh. Um, I think that it's a very scary thing that I was able to run a women's division because now it's the only thing I want to do. So even though that opportunity is kind of ceasing, to exist. Um, we are in an exciting time, and it's pretty much the only thing I want to do moving forward. I think you're doing a great job. <laughs> Thank you so much, Maria. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only Maria Canellis. All right, it's Blackie. I'm down here at Super Mega Fest with my friend Robert, and I'm walking around seeing all these people dressed up, and you see Batman, and you see this person in the Mandalorian, and it's pretty good stuff. But this one person just walked by, and it blew my mind. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the city of Boston, may I introduce Boston Harley. Hi. <laughs> so tell me, what inspired this outfit? Well, 
I just love the Bruins, and I'm a big Comic-Con fan. Been dressing up for, I don't want to say how many years, 16. Um, and just, yeah, huge Bruins fan, huge Harley fan. Why not put them together? We're going to play a couple, a couple words. We're going to say words, see, see what she says back to me. Hockey, one word. Badass. Bruins? Badass. Canadians? No. Canadians? No. Canadians? Canadians. She said Montreal Canadiens. You are never fans. You're never welcome in Boston with myself and Boston Harley there. Keep your loonies and toonies back home. All right, folks, you can't have Super Mega Fest without the Dark Knight Batman. It is a tradition to have the one and only Matches Malone right here at the Sheridan and Framingham Matches such an honor. You've been on the show for 14 years now. This is your 14th Super Mega Fest with the Bob Show. Exactly. Such an honor. It's always an honor. How long was the ride from Gotham? Be serious. Uh, well, maybe two and a half. Cause I two and a half. Well, I stepped on the gas a little bit. You stepped on the gas more than a little bit. Yeah. It usually takes me three and a half. Yeah, well, you know what? I'm usually in a hurry. I've seen a lot of beautiful Harleys around here. Yes, very much so. Those are the only Harleys I like to ride. But hey, no, let's, well, hey, let's keep it PG for the kids at home. Family friendly. Penguins here. Yeah, that's foul. Jokers here. Yeah, that's a clown. Okay, all right. Who are you here to see the most? So Besides me. Catwoman. Catwoman. Now, that's the cat's meow. All right. Yeah, she's perfect. She is perfect. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So, who have you seen here today that you weren't expecting to see? <sighs> Probably the Bob Show. Yeah, come on. No, because come on, it's a given, listen, dude. No, come listen. on, dude. You come up with listen. a better answer than that. We haven't been here in two years, and nothing is it was a the virus, Bob Show. Dude. It was called COVID nineteen. You gotta no get out of the bad cave. You gotta get out of the bad cave once in a while. Yeah, exactly. Gordon, how's he doing? Uh, he's hanging in. Better get how's his daughter doing? Bob, we'll go there. All right, we won't go there. All right, folks. He that is the one and only, the living legend. They don't come any better. They don't come any better than matches Malone. Okay, I'm here with Ellie. Ellie, um, what is the costume here? Tell me what the costume is today. Sure, this is Astrid from How to Train Your Dragon 2. Oh, interesting, interesting. And what inspired you to wear the costume today? I just really like the character, and it's comfortable. Um, it's nice outside too, because you got the fur. So cold outside, comfortable inside. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. You look fantastic in the costume. I love the boots. They must be keeping you warm, right? Definitely. Yep. All right. <laughs> um, who are you excited to see here today? Um, really just excited to see everyone. I'm a really big fan of the Jim Henson puppeteers, so I always like stopping by that table. Um, and then just seeing all the other costumers that stop by as well. That's fantastic. I want to thank you much for your time. Thank you. <laughs> all right, folks, let's check out more here at MegaFast. All right, folks, I just joined up right now with Sepentor and one of the Cobra Guards here. They are part of Finest. They are a G.I. Joe charity costume company that goes around and brings the good faith of G.I. Joe to all the people spreading the good gospel. What are you guys doing here today at MegaFest? Uh, we are collecting donations here for uh, Canines for Warriors. They are an organization that rescues dogs from kill shelters and has them trained as PTSD dogs for soldiers who have PTSD. And how's the charity? You getting a lot of donations so far? So far, so good. All right, brother. Serpentor, brother, how's it going? Doing good. Doing good day, Good, Nick. Uh, good. fantastic. Is this, uh, now, I've known you here. You were here uh, 2019. I was. How many years have you been here now? I don't know, my third year here. Well, yeah, third year here. Yeah. And everybody's coming up to you. They want to get pictures with you. Oh, and people love the suit. They yeah. love the suit. Yeah. Everybody, everybody loves the suit. I mean, and when are we going to see Serpentor in the movies, right? They need interest in the G.I. Joe films, right? One can only hope. One can, one, only, one hope. can only hope. You know, Hollywood's got to be willing to do the odd characters. Yeah. Yeah, they get, they got to get away from the mainstream. Like the Dreadnoughts, right? With Zartan. Come on. Oh, come on. The, the Dreadnoughts would be fantastic. Wouldn't that be cool, right? You wouldn't see the Dreadnoughts, right? Absolutely. And Zartan, when he, he had the coolest action figure, right? You could you put the action figure in the sun and he would change color. I mean, you couldn't get better than that, right? That's right. All right, folks. I might be showing my age to those younger groups out there, but these guys know what I'm talking about. Folks, right here, the world's finest G.I. Joe at MegaFast. All right, folks, we're here for the 2021 Super Mega Fest. I'm here with one of the greatest pro wrestling legends of all time, WWE Hall of Famer, former two-time WWF World Heavyweight Champion, the one and only Bob Backlund. Bob, how's it like being here today? Bob. Bob. That's Mr. Bob Backlund to you, young man, and you got it. Do it and walk away. Mr. Backlund.
Southern young man. Do you remember? Hey! Hey, you're gonna run into the wall! I can run!